Okay, hello. My name is Pete Pizzatello. I'm uh, part of the product marketing group here at CAST. And I wanted to thank you uh, for, for all taking your time to join us today for today's webcast. The topic is building resilient software to support business. So our speaker today is Lev Lazokin. He is our VP of Worldwide Marketing for CAST. He is responsible for CAST uh, market development and strategy uh, thought leadership worldwide. And he's been in this role for several years. Prior to CAS, I was uh, Director of Global uh, SME Marketing for SAP. Uh, prior to that, he worked for the Corporate Executive Board as a, one of the leaders for the Application Executive Council. Uh, it's a group that worked with heads of application or development organizations uh, throughout Fortune 100, Fortune 1000 companies to help them identify best practices. And prior to that, he worked for McKinsey as a business strategist and uh, the Mitre Corporation. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Les. Uh, thank you, Pete. Uh, thanks for the intro, and uh, thank you to everybody for uh, taking the time um, uh, to spend with us. Um, so the topic that we're going to have today is um, uh, we're going to talk about uh, software risk, obviously, as you've seen in our um, uh, invitation, which is why you're here. Uh, and you know, and we're going to um, um, drill down a bit into what we. Uh, mean by software risk here and what we can actually do about it. One of the things that I just want to say um, uh, up front is that there are uh, uh, there's a lot of um, theory and practice around risk measurement and risk management in most organizations, uh, and you know and that um, uh, is starting to uh, touch on uh, items of software risk. Uh, but um, you know a lot of that. Uh, uh, work is is at this point fairly quantitative. Uh, there, you know, it's kind of an actuarial discipline, and there's a lot of um, uh, models looking at all sorts of risk uh, that you might experience uh, in in running a software-intensive or IT-intensive organization. You know, including um, um, you know weather and uh, uh, political risks, and you know risks of vendors uh, shutting down, like what we've seen. Uh, unfortunately, in a couple of high-profile cases, um, you know what we're going to focus on specifically is um, uh, not so much the uh, you know the, the process or the context uh, in which IT organizations run, uh, but really the assets, uh, the software itself, the product itself, and what the IT organization can start to do to get ahead uh, of some of the risk problems that we see. Um, in software-intensive or IT-intensive businesses. Um, one thing that I want to warn you up front is, um, you know, I'm going to uh, take a couple of deep dives into some fairly technical topics uh, just to show you uh, where it's important to look uh, and what it's important to look for uh, if you're truly going to look at uh, risky uh, constructs and, you know, risk factors in software. So. Uh, with that, um, basically, uh, you know, we're going to talk a fair amount about CAST. We don't always do this on our webinars. Uh, we, we are doing that in this one. Um, we're going to kind of interweave how CAST uh, addresses some of these software risk topics that, that we have. Uh, and, um, you know, we'll kind of review what types of risk we, you know, we can look at and uh, how CAST technology uh, can help with uh, those risks and what some of the methodology is. All right, so risk, you know, as I alluded to before, risk is a big topic in business. It's something that um, um, is becoming more and more prevalent, and it's uh, it's really a pretty well-recognized issue at the C-level uh, and, you know, at the executive level uh, within most IT-intensive or software-intensive companies. Uh, so here what we see are some statistics from some studies that we've seen in the past. This was done with the Econ Economist Intelligence Unit. Uh, by IBM, and um, you know, here you see uh, some attitudes and responses uh, from um, IT executives about uh, the impact of risk on customer sat, brand reputation, profitability, um, and then specifically drilling down into reputation risk. What really drives reputation risk for IT organizations? And you know, and naturally, the first thing that comes up is data theft, and that's always uh, you know, it's costly, it's embarrassing. Uh, although it seems to, I, I've, I've read an article recently in the Wall Street Journal uh, suggesting that um, 
you know, anyone is probably going to get hacked, so you might as well just get used to it. And uh, the way you deal with that is really how you manage the response and the communication around your response. And that's really the important thing. But still, I think most organizations uh, would like to prevent that from happening. Um, system failure comes in second, uh, and it's a much closer second than I would have realized before looking at this data. Uh, you know, data loss um, and various, you know, website out outages, that various other failures. Compliance comes in fairly important as well, and uh, we're going to see more and more regulation, I think, as we all know, in the healthcare and financial services specifically industries, um, more and more regulation that obviously compliance is just going to become a major risk, and hopefully it'll help us deal with uh, some of the other risks rather than just creating a lot of unnecessary red tape, which is sometimes a byproduct.